Uh, good afternoon. I would like to uh, thank Vedant Knowledge System and um, Dr. Arjun uh, for giving me this opportunity to review esteemed paper from the conference. And uh, I have, uh, I would like to uh, now give my review comments. The first paper that I reviewed was Status Symbol and Tech Obsession, Unpacking Motivation Behind Youth Luxury Electronics Consumption in Nagpur District by Ms. Shruti and Dr. Srinivas. The paper is an interesting paper in the field of psychological marketing. It uh, has a lot of implication for marketeers and policy makers. It talks about what are the different factors that impact electronic consumption, uh, compare factors like social influence, aspirational lives, and uh, brand perception, self-expression. And uh, uh, it's a good paper. Uh, my only suggestion is if the author could include some bit more of uh, limitations that would be uh, better for the study. And uh, since it has already adopted a mixed method approach, uh, and uh, however, it's a cross-section study, but uh, it can be extended to other geographical areas and one limitation can be added to uh, what, what is the limitation of the study before a generic conclusion can be drawn. Second paper is Adoption of Passwordless Banking Understanding Consumer Behavior by Ramya and Shriya Vasudevan and Duti Srinivasan. It talks about uh, the banking sector transformation to, uh, through use of UPI and uh, uh, how it is enabling the uh, 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 achievement of uh, passwordless uh, Vixit Bharat vision through a passwordless banking uh, experience. So uh, it's again a paper in domain of consumer behavior and uh, UPI is indeed a social innovation that serves as a bricolage and uh, that has uh, helped to achieve the goal of financial inclusion and social inclusion for 1.7 billion people below the pyramid, not only in India, but in other parts of the world. So it's indeed uh, uh, an interesting research question. Uh, probably uh, as far as uh, the comments are concerned, the author could uh, include uh, the uh, future areas for research in the paper. and. Uh, um, that's about it. The third paper is analyzing trends and implication of gross and net NPS and scheduled commercial bank and public sector bank, a comparative study by Anij Roop Vesani. Uh, at the outset, I would like to say there is one, uh, I think it's a gap in the paper that it does not clarify whether it's uh, the scheduled commercial banks other than public sector banks comparison to public sector banks or, other way, or some other way, because it creates a confusion that what is the sample of study for the paper. And otherwise, it, the research question is interesting. It talks about the challenges uh, that are faced by private sector banks, uh, challenges that are faced by not only private sector banks, scheduled banks and commercial banks and public sector banks, which are part of scheduled commercial banks, in terms of increasing NPS. Uh, but at the outset, there is a, a need to clarify that what is the sample for the study. Uh, then uh, the next paper is relating to capital adequacy and systemic risk evidence from selected Indian private sector bank. Again, a very interesting paper by Shainal Dev Dhawal Vyas and Jyotin Rajani. It uh, aims to, it, it studies uh, the performance of the private sector banks using the CAMEL study and uh, it uses various related measures. Uh, the paradigm is interesting and uh, it also highlights uh, the requirement how uh, the, uh, it touches upon a very important topic in emerging scenario uh, of banking. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to highlight that the author could include a historical context for regulatory framework and why the regulatory framework of Camel's rating is very important in today's scenario. Um, uh, for example, taking a cue from the Basel framework and um, uh, uh, that why performance among all the performance measures, the Camel's rating has a better uh, it should be considered uh, for comparing the performance of private sector banks in India or outside India. Then there is a paper on influence of social media and influencer marketing on youth luxury uh, products which we already did. Financial inclusion in Gujarat. 
a study on SLBC by Pooja Ji Vaghela and Dr. Pintu. And it's an interesting paper because it touches upon one of the most important uh, uh, goals, sustainable development goals of financial inclusion. And uh, very few papers have indeed touched upon the role of financial intermediaries that uh, like NGOs or self-help promotion agencies or SLBC state level banking committee. So it talks about the Apex uh, committee, state level banking committee and its role. Uh, so NABAD is the regulator of most of the schemes which are meant for rural financial inclusion and within that the state intervention has played a humongous role uh, which often is subsided. Uh, definitely there are other semi-informal vehicles like self-help group but all this would not have been possible without uh, the state intervention or role of NABAD or state level banking committees. So I feel that uh, this paper is actually making a lot of contribution. There was a huge research gap. And it's one of the good papers. Then the next paper is Behavioral Finance and Systematic Literature Review by Vipul uh, Sundabhatra and Dr. Vidhi Sangvi. Uh, it is again uh, a very important paper in domain of behavioral biases and behavioral finance. It talks about what factors impact investment decisions and uh, it creates, uh, it aims to develop a conceptual model and uh, uh, how I, I would uh, like to say that uh, uh, the, the author should uh, uh, pay more attention to methodology. It should pick up some of the paradigms of qualitative research to further uh, strengthen the study. It's a very interesting topic. Not many, many people talk about the conceptual framework that exists in behavioral biases, and it could be actually of a lot of relevance to the research scholars and academic community as a whole. So uh, the author could uh, contemplate uh, including some uh, method methodology as well as uh, technique of uh, qualitative research and research paradigm to give more strength to the paper. Then there is one paper by Vridya uh, Tushar Kumar on text structure uh, and uh, it talks about analysis of direct and indirect taxes and particularly it provides an analysis of text structure in Indian textile uh, sector, the transformation from pre-GST regime to uh, GST regime. So it is an extremely uh, innovative paper because uh, tax uh, reforms are one of the most uh, important uh, tool of fiscal policy implementation in India. It directly impacts the uh, financial system as well as the banking system as well as all other system, uh, all, all entire rest of the macroeconomic parameters like GDP, inflation, economic growth, prices, employment. So it's a very important topic. It's of relevance to policymakers, not only to academicians in the field of finance and income tax, but to, uh, to almost everybody. So uh, it uh, pertains to one particular sector, textile sector. So what I would suggest is if other could uh, include a little bit, one more section on limitation of the study as uh, being a cross-section study, which is just focused on one particular sector and uh, the way forward for the uh, study or research. Uh, so I would again like to thank uh, Dr. Arjun and uh, Vedant Knowledge System for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thanks. This is Dr. Nishri Malhotra and uh, um, I'm uh, grateful to uh, the organization and to the conference team and uh, to Dr. Arjun for giving me this opportunity. It was a great learning experience. Thank you.